This is the data sheet for a family of motors made by Maxon with a 10 watt nominal power rating. And what that means is at the nominal speed and the nominal torque, uh, the output power is 10 watts. Now in the same size package of motor, they produce different versions that have different nominal voltages. And here we see the 742 version takes 9 volts nominally, and the 743 takes 12 volts nominally. And the difference is that the 9 volt version probably has thicker wires and fewer loops in the coil so that you need more current, but you can operate with less voltage. Whereas the 12 volt version has thinner wires and more loops, so you can operate with less current, but you need a higher voltage. But both of them will have the same nominal output power of 10 watts. So let's take a look at this typical data sheet and entries that we see there. And let's start out with the characteristics here at the bottom. So first of all, we have the terminal resistance, the resistance from the one end of the input to the motor to the other end. And you can see here that the 9 volt version has 1.23 ohms of resistance, while the 12 volt version has 2.18 ohms of resistance, confirming that indeed the 12 volt motor does have thinner wires and therefore higher resistance. We can also see the inductance for each of the motors, and uh, it's measured in henrys or millihenrys. Uh, we also can see the torque constant here for the two motors. And the SI units here are newton meters per amps, but they're giving it to us in millinewton meters per amps. Uh, then we have the speed constant. And the speed constant is just the inverse of the electrical constant, which we learned before in SI units is exactly the same value as the torque constant. So the speed constant here they're giving in revolutions per minute per volt. Those are not SI units. We usually use radians and seconds instead of revolutions per minute but revolutions per minute is common in the industry. So you should be comfortable converting back and forth. You also see the speed torque gradient here. That's just the slope of the speed torque curve. The mechanical time constant is something we haven't seen before, but if you apply the nominal voltage to the unloaded motor and let it spin, this is the amount of time it's going to take to get up to 63% of its no load speed. So it's measured in milliseconds, about four milliseconds for each of them. And then finally, we have the rotor inertia down here, which here is given in grams times centimeters squared. So these are characteristics of the motor. Then up here, we get some derived values. Uh, the nominal voltage, again, uh, we have the two different nominal voltages for the two different models. The no load speed is about 5,000 RPMs for each. The no load current is about 30 milliamps for each. And the reason it's not zero is because there is some friction torque required to overcome friction, or some torque required to overcome friction. So therefore, uh, the, the no load current is not zero as it would be in the ideal speed torque curve. The nominal speed, again, that's the speed where we're operating at the maximum value of, of uh, power output we can get while we're still in the continuous operating region. So that nominal speed is about 4,000 RPM for the two models. The nominal torque, or the maximum continuous torque you can get without overheating, is about 25 or 30 millinewton meters. And if I jump down here to the stall torque, so this is the maximum torque you can get out when the motor is not rotating at all, uh, then we can see that it's about 120 or so millinewton meters. So so the stall torque is much larger than the nominal torque or the continuous torque. Uh, since we have a max continuous torque, we also have a max continuous current. And if you were to multiply that current by the torque constant down here, you should get the nominal torque. Uh, the starting current is the same thing as the stall current. So uh, when the motor is starting up, uh, it's at zero angular velocity. So initially, it's going to require a lot of current to get started. That's the same thing as the current that you have at stall. And finally, here's the maximum efficiency. We can see about 86, 87% for this motor. And again, the maximum efficiency typically happens at high speeds and low torques.